Well, hey, 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 we're here. What, episode eight, New Run? Episode eight of the Huntland Man podcast. We're getting to be old pros at this thing. We want to thank Southern Ag Credit for being our title sponsor of this thing. I deal with these folks every day, and our host deals, I mean, our guest deals with them a lot, too. I'm actually, uh, Ryan Wascom and I, old Ryan, are buying our place in Missouri this week. He's up there hunting now, and yes, I didn't get to go. And as always, Southern Ag Credit is, is helping us right now. We've got three or four deals working with them. Thank them so much for being a sponsor of the Huntland Man podcast and always thank, taking good care of our clients. Today, we've got a special podcast and a special guest, Scott Campbell with United Country. He's been one of the employees over there, what, almost since day one, huh, Scott? Since 2002, I believe. So that was the year I graduated high school, if I want to date myself a little bit. But uh, Scott is... Um, you know, he's one of our top new realtors year in, year out. I think he was the first employee at United Country. and It was Gibson Realty then, then now Southern States Realty. And Scott, you know, is exceptional, extremely uh, professional at what he does. And what we're going to talk about and what the title of today's episode is, is how to choose your realtor. Um, you know, we've taken you through financing. We've taken you through picking the spot. You know, we've talked about deer and you know, and selling property in Missouri, we've done a little bit of everything, but I think this is a really good topic to talk about is how to choose your realtor because it, of course, if you're listening to this, hopefully you've already chosen one of us, but if you hadn't and you don't choose us or you're listening in an area that we don't service, you need to be smart about how you choose your realtor. Hey, we'd love you to choose a uh, realtor United Country agent or a United Country agent, but you know, there's great agents that work for every company in our area and every area. And you need to do your research, and that's what me and Scott are going to talk about today. Well, Scott, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Slade. I really appreciate you having me tonight. We just cooked some mighty fine inch and a quarter ribeyes that were really good, so we may get a little sleepy towards the end of the podcast, but we're going to dive right into this thing. Uh, Scott and I kind of did some preliminary talks today. Uh, Scott lives in Macomb, uh, does a lot of housing, uh, lots, commercial, uh, small residence, and he does a lot of land like, like I do too. So he's got he's got a hold of a little bit of everything. As you know, I don't hardly do any any houses, Scott. In fact, if I get I got a piece of commercial ground last year, and I immediately said I told the the client I said I'd be doing you a disservice if I listed it. So I, I referred it over to Scott, and he's taking good care of that client. Um, something that Scott talked about as soon as the, one of the first things when I asked Scott what we want to put on this list, the thing to talk about, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hint on it and I'm going to let Scott take it from there. Scott said, hey, one of the first things that, a, um, that you need to know when you're looking into a realtor is, are they a full-time realtor? And Scott, I'll let you take that from there. Yeah, absolutely, Slade. You know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, there are a lot of part-time real estate agents out there and um, not not to say anything bad about those folks, but it, when you're looking for a realtor, I really, really think that you should look for someone that's 100% involved in what they're doing. You want somebody that, that eats, drinks, sleeps, real estate, 24 hours a day, that they're going to be on top of it. If somebody calls about your property, you want somebody that's going to be able to answer the phone, that's going to be knowledgeable, and it's going to be able to get back to them quickly. And they're not going to be concerned with another job or another uh, something else that may be going on in their life. And I couldn't agree more with what Scott has to say. You know, uh, I, I use this all the time is when I wake up in the morning, uh, you can watch me on my Instagram. If I'm not turkey hunting, the first thing I'm waking up and doing in the morning is I'm talking about and thinking about living, breathing, just like Scott said, selling real estate. And then nothing against a part-time realtor. It's, you know, we have, kind of have a low barrier for entry into the real estate business. And what I mean by that is you go, anybody can go take take the class, take the test, and you become a realtor. Um, that's good and bad. Uh, it's a great business to get into as a side business or whatever, but most of the time, and Scott will agree with this, a lot of times, our, our, most of the time, our clients are selling their most valuable asset, their home. Absolutely. Or their land, or their investment land, or whatever. And if you're gonna sell the most valuable asset you're going to have. You want to deal with a professional. And Scott, I'm going to let you touch on this. We didn't talk about this earlier, but as you know, it happens all the time. Well, my cousin's a realtor or my niece is a realtor. How, how would you suggest somebody getting around that if maybe they're in-laws or whatever? This is a touchy subject. 
you know, how would you get around that? What would you say to that guy? Like that. Uh, Asa's saying hello. Hey, Asa. We had a little pause no. delay. We got Asa, watch Asa in here on the podcast. Yeah. She's coming in. Here some new She's the, the hunting land girl right there. Well, you know, that, that is a touchy subject, and I don't really I don't really know exactly how to approach that, but I will tell you this. If you're, if you're a client and, and you tell me, well, my cousin or my sister or brother, whatever, is a real estate agent, still, you want, like Slade said earlier, you, you know that you're going to be selling or buying one of the, the, the most important assets in your life. And, and you have to ask yourself this question, is this person that is going to be guiding me along in this process, first of all, do, do, do they know the process? Is this their main focus in life? Um, are they do, they, do they do the things that need to be done to get your property sold and to advertise it correctly and all of those things? Because there's so many details and people don't realize this. There's so many details that go along with uh, marketing a property. And, and one of the first things that, that we do when we go to list a property and we get ready to put it on the market is to take photos. And a lot of people do not realize how important it is to make sure that the photos that you are putting out there properly represent the property that's there. I've had instances before where someone they 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 didn't want to go look at a certain property i had this happen just recently about four or five months ago they didn't want to go look at this property it was perfect it was exactly what the, this couple was looking for and i had seen it in person but the 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 pictures and the photos that this agent had put on online did not represent the property at all. You, you could not even see the house in, in the pictures because of, the, of the, the lighting and things. So they actually went and looked at the property, bought the property, and bought it for well under market value because of the fact that nobody was really looking at it because it wasn't presented right. So your agent needs to be aware of those things, and they need to market your property just like it was their own property. And Scott's talking, you know, he just mentioned about on basically the selling side about taking the pictures. But what I picked up out of what he just said was he's a knowledgeable agent. He was representing a buyer in that situation. Absolutely. A local expert, which most agents are in their market or the good agents are, he knew that that property fit their field. So Scott Lindsay sat in the same seat you're sitting in, and we talked about, you know, how to pick the spot. And, and, you know, the different kind of, Scott's office is across the hall from mine, so I hear most of his conversation, and he hears most of mine. And, you know, it's the same thing. What are you looking for? What's your budget? And, you know, if you have a five minute conversation with somebody, hear their goals and their things, you can help. And, and whether it's your listing or somebody else's, it's, look, Scott's job, of course, we're going to represent our clients well and try to sell our listings. But if we know that another property fits it, we gonna get you in that door or in that property or in that gate. And uh, so as a buyer, a local expert, just like the couple he referenced, he knew that that property fit their bill and he sold it to him and a good job on that. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, you, your, your brother-in-law or such and such, you know, and that's a family deal and that, that's tough to get around. And, you know, basically, I know Scott's like this, I'm like this. We like to be the best in our field. Everybody likes to work with their best in their field. And if you're going to be, if you're going to sell the most valuable asset, we will say this again, you need to use somebody that's a full-time realtor, knows what they're doing, and is a professional about what they're doing. Speaking of that, something Scott and I talked about earlier, you know, all's good and grand whenever the agent uh, will do it for cheap and they sell your property fast and everything goes good. And that happens sometimes. That's not the ones we remember. Right. No, we don't remember those. No. The, there, look, in this business, there can be problems. There can be title problems. There can be financing problems. There can be inspection problems. And if you're dealing back to the full-time realtor thing like Scott, Scott, I want to ask you this. How much and what can go wrong? And what do people not realize that can go wrong in a real estate transaction? 
Well, that's, that's a long list. That, that's a very long list, and there's, there's probably uh, less things that can't go wrong than, than there are that can, because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And you have to be prepared for them. That, and, and some of the main things is, you know, there could always be a hiccup with financing. There could all, and the main thing that I deal with, because I do deal with a lot of residential properties, more so than, than Slade does, but is I say I really negotiate the deal twice because you first negotiate the deal on the, on the buying end. But the second time around is when they had that home inspection done, which every buyer nowadays pretty much does no matter what. They're going to have that home inspection done and you're going to have to be able to, first of all, explain to that buyer, okay, you're buying a, 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 a piece of a building or, or something that's man-made, so it's going to have problems. You've got to explain to them that how they go about that process and what they're going to be looking for. And then you've got to be able to explain to your seller too on the other side, okay, look, this, this window is cracked or this is not working properly. You're going to have to get this fixed for this, for this buyer because nobody else is going to buy the same way. So you have to, you have to know how to balance that. It's a balancing act and it's a, it's a negotiation process all over again, just as is the, the price that you start off with. And what Scott's talking about, the home inspection, you know, we do this on our big London properties too. Anytime there's a camp involved, you know, there's a home inspection process. We have our inspectors that go out. We have good relationships because we're full-time realtors with these home inspectors. And Scott will tell you this, I'm, we're sitting in a basically brand new house. A home inspector can come in here and he'll find all kinds of things wrong. It don't matter if they're, they're always going to find something. I had 23 items on a brand new construction the other day. Mm. Brand new construction. We don't want to mention that builder. <laughs> and I don't even know who it was, but I know we don't want to mention them. But So something Scott said that I caught on, Scott said negotiating with the seller. So a lot of times if you're representing a buyer, Scott, you're negotiating with that other agent. Absolutely. And that's the other thing. You never know. You may be, if you're in a situation where you're just representing one side of the deal, you're negotiating with the other agent. So that, that you have to be professional. You have to get all the documentation and everything to that agent on what the problem may be. And, and it doesn't have to be just on the inspection side. A lot of, a lot of times you have property boundary disputes. You have to know how to get that situated. There was an instance not too long ago where we had to uh, negotiate an easement for someone that, that uh, had a landlocked property they were trying to sell. Um, it, there's just so many things out there that are involved. There's so many moving parts. Financing. If, if you don't send your buyer to the right person to loan them the money, you, you may not get the deal closed. Uh, you've got to know which ones can get the job Especially done. Especially in this market. And which ones can get it done quickly and efficiently. And so you need to send them to the right place. And I tell my sellers a lot of times, you know, if, if, a, if someone is approved, the, the buyer is approved, who they are approved with because of, of me knowing each, each one makes a big difference. And so what Scott's talking about, about things that can go wrong, you know, so let's say tomorrow you come in, you're buying a piece of land from me or a house from Scott or commercial, whatever. We're going to be helping you write that contract. And so doing and dealing with a professional, and Scott and I are not the only two options out there. There's great agents that work in every market. If that agent is part-time or just started doing it or doesn't know what they're doing, you know, if they write that contract wrong or, or, or as far as days on the, you know, you know, days to close, dealing especially with, with the market we have right now, or they're dealing with the wrong bank, or they don't have a good enough relationship with these closing attorneys, title companies, or these banks. Scott will tell you, we sell a lot of property, and these banks, these closing attorneys, we know them, have their cell phone numbers, and it's important. When things come up at 7 o'clock at night and you need something, we can get these people on the phone a lot of times. Not that we want to, but if we have to, we can. And if you're not dealing with somebody who wrote that contract right, maybe he said, like I know right now, if he said, hey, we'll close this deal in 30 days, everything better happen perfect right now. The market's crazy hot. Every inspector's backed up. Every surveyor's backed up. You know, if 
there's every attorney's backed up. So if, if, if they don't know these things because they're not heavily in this market doing it every day, what that can happen is towards the end of the deal, that seller out there may be saying, all right, we're closing. We're closing the first right on Friday. Well, no, this didn't happen. You could very well have your earnest money at stake. You could very well lose out on the property because in motions, it shouldn't, but it does. You know, a lot of times this is a, the, somebody's home they grew up in or grandma's house or whatever. There's so much emotion that goes into these things. And people make, we're making business decisions, Scott and I, because we're, we're in this all day, every day. But it's hard to tell a seller or a buyer to take emotion out of this thing. And so these emotions get high and people get fed up. And they throw their hands up. And I hear them in Scott's office and he's heard in mine. People get upset over things that shouldn't upset them. But if you handle it right on the front end, if you have realistic expectations for buyer and sellers, you know, you can just smooth these things out a lot much. And if you're confident, and somebody told me today, they said, it's like you sound so confident on this video, some video I did on his property. And I said, well, this is what I do all day. Already I'm confident in what I say. I know Scott's confident in what he says too. So if you're confident in, listen, I promise you, Mr. Seller, Mr. Buyer, Give me three or four days. We'll get this little issue tight, and we'll close next Tuesday, and everything be good. If we take this off the market, you know, this may be 30 to 45 days before we get back on the market at best. So knowing those things and being confident behind what you say because you're professional makes such a big difference. You know, and we have, the, we mentioned it earlier, you know, we don't remember the easy ones. And we hear the horror stories from bad realtors and things that happen, and, and, and you just feel so bad for these people sometimes. They didn't know any better. Uh, Scott and I were talking earlier. There's something like 75 to 80 percent of clients deal with the first realtor they talk to, and I think that's a mistake. I'd love if they talk to talk to me first, but certain things, Scott, I want to talk about. Um, you're a uh, buyer seller. You're getting ready to choose your realtor. Um, let's say you're taking. I'm not. I, I don't know anybody. I don't know who to use. Where are you searching? How are you searching? Or what you're looking for? Well, the first thing I guess I would look at is um, I, I'd want to get look at read some reviews maybe on different websites that this that this realtor may have, may have or may not have. Look them up on Facebook. Look them up on whatever social media platform they're advertising on, and that people will tell you what kind of experience that they had with that agent. So I, I would I would start with that. And then I would also want to know how long they've been in the business. I would definitely want to know whether they're full time or not. We talked about that earlier. But <clears throat> I'd want to know how many transactions they do in a year and, and, and just kind of fill them out to see what uh, to what kind of agent that they are. And also the other thing too, it if you're selling, and you and I have talked about this, if, if you're going to sell a certain type of property, say it's a, a big land tract or a hunting, hunting type property, you want to talk to a real estate agent that deals with that type of property, that's an expert in that, that does a lot of that. So check their records, see what they do. If you're going to be selling a home on 20 acres or 30 or whatever, you need to talk to somebody that sells a lot of homes like the property you have for sale. Because every person kind of has their niche that what they like to do and what they work in, so that's that's one of the things that I would do. Make sure that that agent is um, good at the type of property that you're trying to sell or buy. All all good things. I, I, when you know, if you look somebody up on social media, you can usually figure out who they are. They're going to tell you if you scroll far enough down in that feed. Look at their websites. Go to their personal websites. Don't just look at their stuff. Look at third party like your realtor.com or Zillow or you know in my in my world the land watches and things. See what they're listing. What they're, you want somebody that's good at their job and is aggressive. And, and one thing I would mention too is if you're interviewing an agent and that just say you're just for example just say you're going to sell your your home and you're interviewing an agent. Well, you, you go to that agent's other listings, look at their listings, read their ads, look at their photographs, see where those listings are being advertised at, see what sites they're being put on. Because if you can't find that agent's listings, then odds are they're not going to be able to find your listing whenever you list it with them. And this is not hard to do. What Scott just said and what he meant to go find it, he meant on, on, online. 
So if you hit Google search, or your Bing search, or social media, or whatever, and you can't find those agents, problem one. Um, and, and literally in the same amount of time you sat down at night and scrolled through your social media, within five minutes you should be able to, to figure this thing out. And, and definitely talk to, talk to these people. You know, uh, if you don't get me on the phone, it's because I'm on the other line. You know, get somebody that, that responds and, and, and does a good job. And, and, and you also, this is something to note on the other side. A good agent is going to be a busy agent. If an agent, every time you call them, can be there in five minutes, it's probably because they don't have a lot going on. And I speak for personals. You know, if, if somebody wants to look at the property the rest of this week, I'm sorry, I'm booked. And so a good agent is going to be a busy agent. So understand that. And that's the same with a good surveyor or a good title attorney or anything like that. Good people at their job are going to be busy at the job. And that's what you want because you want them involved in that market. You want them, you know, the thing about it is if it's a land business or a housing business, I guarantee you that all the people that are looking for land in my phone right now are on Scott Lindsay's or other agents phones too and the same with houses you know, the same clients are floating around and we talk, a lot of, we all talk to them and the real estate agents you know we talk to each other constantly you want somebody that's involved in the market yeah 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 i've seen that house that the stewards got listed that's a nice house we need to go look at that you need somebody that knows this stuff like the back of their hand and if it's a problem property if, if the client says look i want to go look at such and such property or house or camp or whatever it is and say listen I'm not trying to downgrade that property, but I've already been there. It looks better. You know, you said something earlier. You said the pictures represent the property. You didn't say it made it look good. You said it represented. And I told, I've been teaching you, Ryan, about how to take pictures. I said, Ryan, we can't always take pictures of the best stuff. If it's got some ugly cut over, we may not put as many pictures of that, but we've got to represent it. Right. Um, you know, if there's a, uh, it, it, you know, you just, you got to do a good job of representing the property because I heard somebody say it one time, and I thought it was rude at first, but I I don't need any practice showing property. If it's got an ugly house beside it, you might as well get in the pictures, because guess what? When they get there, they're going to see it. Oh, this coffee's tasting good. <laughs> you did what? a good job with that, son. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, let's talk about some, oh yeah, something we didn't mention, their company. Uh, Scott, how much do you think that the company, like we work for a national franchise company, and I know a little bit of this answer because I've talked to you about it before, but how much does their company and the people they work with, does that weigh on your decision? Like if, if you work for a United Country or a mom and pop or, or Century 21, does that matter to you? I mean, a lot of people I know, like in the cities and stuff, they love a Keller Williams or a Remax, the balloon, what do you tell me? Well, I would say that, it, you know, it, it does matter some, and it, it because the company that you work with, you, you really can be no better than the company that you work with. So each company offers each agent different tools and different things that they can work with to, to help them better themselves and to help them market uh, their, their properties better. And so I would say that's a, that is a big concern because dealing with, for example, with United Country, we have a lot of tools that, that maybe some other agents don't have. We have great support staff in our office. We spend a lot of money every month on advertising that maybe some other agents or don't, their offices don't spend as much. So yes, that is a big part of it. But then on the other hand, also it, in some situations, if you, you may have a go-getter agent that, that spends a lot of their own money, that does a lot of stuff and a lot of advertising behind the scenes that, that you don't know about. So just, you know, the, the company's not everything, but I would say that it does make a big difference because that, that agent that, that's with a company that's going to have all those tools, they are going to be able to do more because they're going to have the funds backing them. Well, Scott, I'll ask you this, and we'll, we'll, we're just going to touch on this because we'll do a whole podcast on it at another time. Um, People do this all the time, and, 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 and Scott's in this space, and I don't know if he ever thought about that, but I know Scott gets aggravated if somebody else gets a listing he should have. And then New Ryan will tell you, I get frustrated, and it's because we believe we're our client's best option. And when you get to a space like that, in any, if you're a tire chain shop and you think we do the best job, you get aggravated when somebody goes somewhere else because you know that you're providing the best service. All right, and what do we know about the best service, Scott? And, and where, this is where I'm headed is 
Um, a good agent's busy, so give him a break. He's going to be busy. It may take him a day or it may take him an hour to call you back on the phone. What also is a good agent that, and we're going to just barely touch on that, if, if, if somebody calls you, Scott, and says, all right, uh, you know, such and such agent said they'll do it for this. And we won't talk numbers, but, you know, everybody says, oh, what's real estate called? 6%? That's what people think. Uh, just give me a little bit on that. Just give me a little bit on, on you know, good agents. Good agents are good agents aren't cheap, is guess what I'm going with this. Well, let me just say this. If you go down to the uh, car car dealership today and you buy a Denali, you're going to pay a lot more money for it than you are if you go buy a, I don't even want to say the worst kind of car there is out there, but Kia. a Kia or whatever, mm -hmm. a, a low-end car. And the, the Denali is going to be a lot nicer. You're going to get a lot more things. It's going to have a better ride. It's going to do this and do that where the other car does not. So I tell everybody all the time when they talk to me, I said, look, I, <clears throat> this is what I charge. Um, I'm not a discount realtor. I, I don't, you know, if, if you have to do something for a cheap, cheap price, then you probably, that may be all you have to offer. So I try to offer everything that I can give to somebody. And I'll tell you what I the basic is. Is um, what I try to do is I try to, to treat my clients. And I tell them, this, this is what I tell them. If you list your house with me, I, I'm going to treat you just like I would my dad or my mom or my brother or my sister or myself. So if I'm going to market your property for you, I'm going to do everything to sell it that I would if I were trying to sell it myself. I treat it just like it's mine. I treat it just like it's my place that I'm selling. And so that's what I tell people because I'm very passionate about what I do. Buyer client, if I'm looking for, a, uh, if the buyer is, is, is looking for a certain type of property, I am going to do the same thing for that buyer as I would if I were looking for that property for myself. And that passion, that's that's what, I, you if you talk to a good agent, and we talk to other good agents in our sphere of influence all the time, you talk to a good one, you hear that passion pretty fast about, you know, the drive of getting the deal done, and it's fun. I mean, we, we enjoy what we do. We we may cuss it sometimes, but we enjoy what we do, and and it really is. You know, we talk about this being your most valuable asset, and uh, you know, if if it's going to be your most valuable valuable asset, you definitely don't want to go with the cheapest bidder. Um, what I tell my clients all the time, I said, at the end of the day, I really feel like we pay for ourselves if we're negotiating this much more. Are we putting who's paying for what in the commissions on the I mean on on the uh, closing costs. You know, at the end of the day, I think. We pay for ourselves, and good service does cost more. You know, if you go to a night, those steaks we ate in there earlier, they probably cost a little bit more than the ones that are on the left side of the shelf, but guess what? They were darn good. <laughs> but, uh, and so, you know, uh, I tell my clients all the time, we try to provide a Cadillac dealership, not a Kia. And it just costs more. It costs more and more to do the advertising. It costs more to have more secretaries. Scott and I both have a secretary, which our wives, and also I've got new Ryan, and we've got other staff at the office. It costs a little more to do that, but at the end of the day, we're going to provide you a better service. We're going to negotiate better for you, and that's my next point on the commission deal. The same agent that said he'll do it for cheap, remember, he's going to be negotiating for you when he gets that offer. So you don't want, he's not going to, if he's not going to negotiate any better for his family, He's definitely not going to negotiate for your family. So something to think about. I'm going to have a whole podcast on this at another time. And, and nothing against people that do it for cheap to each their own. Um, we try to provide a better service. And we don't compete on price. We compete on value. And I, I think that's really, really important. Um, okay, here's something I had wrote down. I thought I almost missed this one. All right, Scott, I'm getting ready to sell my house, my land, you name it. I inherited this property. Um why do I need you, man? They got they got sites everywhere. I can post it. Hey, Facebook Marketplace. I bought a bush hog on there last week. I saw some real estate on there. Why wouldn't I just do that and save six, seven, eight percent, whatever it is? Well, it kind of goes back to everything that we've kind of talked about tonight. There, first of all, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. You gotta have somebody that knows how to navigate those waters. And also, especially in this market today, you have got to price your property where it needs to be. You, you want to price it to where it would bring the most for that seller 
that it can without pricing it out of the market. And if you get a professional real estate person involved in that, that knows what they're doing, they're going to be able to tell you how to get the most value out of that property and they're going to be able to guide you and put it in the right places that is going to bring the buyers in that will be able to afford it and will be able to buy the property that are qualified. There's just, there, there's hundreds of things that go on in a property transaction that you don't realize. It's not just easy. I, I'm going to tell you a lot of times if I go, and this is an example, I see this all the time. <clears throat> if I go to, to, to list somebody's property and that person did a private transaction when they bought it, a lot of times I get a little bit nervous because I don't know, okay, I'm thinking to myself, did they overpay for it? Did, the, did they overpay? Or did what did they do in the beginning that, that, that may have um, made this harder now on them that they didn't do in the beginning? So you, you need somebody that's seen all of the things that can happen. Uh, you need somebody that, that can see a problem before it comes and know what to do. A lot of times I, I find myself um, telling clients things because I know, I, I've heard them say something and I kind of know what they're thinking and I will tell them something to, you know, you said you were going to do this, but I'm going to advise you not to do that because if you do that, here's what's going to happen because I've seen it happen before. So you need that person that's been there, done that. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, I, I've been in the real estate business since 2002. No, actually since 1998. I've been with United Country uh, since 2002. And I, I was wondering the other day. You weren't day, one of those part-time agents, were you, for a little while? Actually, I was. And, and we so can talk about that later. But yeah, I, I was. And I became a full-time agent because I got laid off from my other job. So I, I became a full-time agent the hard way. And uh, I had to get out there and make it happen. And uh, it, it worked out for me. But um, uh, you made me lose my train of thought there with that slave. Where was I at? Let me see. You were, uh, the things that the things that can go wrong. And so when they, they bought the property, they didn't use an agent. Yeah, yeah. But I, I lost my train of thought there. I'm sorry. I, you got me off. Back track. that tape, back that tape up. Uh, <laughs> I know one thing that I've heard you say and I've heard myself say and we know trigger words, you know, so maybe somebody says something and we have to dive into it. Like, for instance, if a client says, well, my, my mom just died, I inherited this property, I want to sell it. Well, you're going to ask the question, well, did they probate the will? Absolutely. And, and, and those sort of things, and, and if you try to sell it yourself or you're using a different agent, you know, maybe they don't know those things. And then you get it under contract, ready, willing, and able buyer, and guess what? Oh, we can't close. It's going to take 90 days to get this will done or whatever. So it's... Definitely, definitely helps to use a professional. But we're talking about why I have a realtor, but um, and look, I, I've looked at it. I see these signs. What is it? For sale by owner dot com or something, you know? And and I've looked on. Heck, I've looked on for listings because usually they're having problems selling it. And uh, Scott, let me ask you this. Okay, so in the land business, maybe a little different, and and what you do maybe a little different. Uh, Today, I was meeting with a, a seller client this morning working on listing a piece of property. And, and one of the things they said, I kind of giggled at whenever they told me on the phone before I got there, was like, look, we want to list well above, they just got it appraised last year. We want to list well above what it appraised. And I kind of giggled in my head and said, well, I bet you do. <laughs> you know, I bet you want to get more than appraised. Typically, and tell me if you do it like this, you may do it different. I, Scott and I do it enough, like in the housing game, it's, uh, price per square foot in this neighborhood and this lot sell for this much and these houses sell for this much in this area and in my world it's land in this area sell for this much dirt value plus timber what i try to do is in my head deal with okay this is what i think professional opinion it's going to appraise for and then i put regular negotiation and it's five or ten percent on top of that and so the goal is we try to get it on the market just above value Everybody's going to, going, to, going to negotiate. Everybody, it's just the way of the world. We're going to negotiate, and we try to end up at a phrase value. Is that basically what you're going to? We're going to get there one way or the other. Yeah, that's that's basically what we do. And in 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 my market, dealing with uh, residential property, uh, you, you're looking at basically a price per square foot on certain types of homes, and and then you figure up your land value with it, and you know you you have location. 
different types of things that affect that value. And what I was going to tell you, too, when you mentioned the person that said, well, I want to list my property you know, for well over appraised value, what happens is, is you wind up actually having to sell the property for under appraised value in the long run. Because if you overprice the property in the very beginning, because you're going to get, usually you're going to get the most value out of that property in the first two to three months when you put it on the market. And if it stays on the market for a year or longer or something like that, people quit looking at it because they may see it over and over and over and over again. And I think it, there's something it gets stale. I call it getting stale. And so if you price that property above the market in the very beginning, too high, it's a fine line right there. I mean, you want to put it right there above it or right on it or right in that range to get people interested and to, that's when you're going to get your best offer. If you put it over and it sits there, then you're going to have to start reducing that price later on and to get that to get it sold at that point. And people don't get market rust. People don't get excited about it. And I do this, and this is this brings up two points. One, this is what I I, tr I tell my clients. I said this is the goal. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it don't. Like yesterday, I just listed seventy eight acres in Wilson County. I need to be having an auction on it. I had one showing today, two tomorrow. And the only reason Friday because I'm busy doing something else. It's got two or three Saturday. You want for that property to hit the market, social media, everything like that, and you want for you to be showing that house at 8 a.m. and say, listen, I'm sorry to cut our tour short, but I've got somebody going to be here at 9.30. You want that excitement in the market. And then they say, I want to buy, you know, I'll give you 95% of value, or I'll give you full asking price, or whatever. Speaking of that, Scott, talk to us about two things. Tell us what the market has been like for you in the 2020 and 2021 let's just we know what was crazy in 2020 let's talk about 2021 is it the same or are you tell give us an update on that and then after that i want you to go into being that the market's so hot do you have any tips on people getting their offers accepted you know because a lot of times there's some multiple offer situations going on right now what do you have any tips that's worked for you lately yeah, absolutely. I, I will just say this. I think 2021 has been even crazier than 2020. Um, it seems like the, the there's a very uh, low amount of properties. The, the, the supply is not very high right now as, as far as properties on the market. So you're dealing with high uh, a high demand of buyers and a low uh, supply of property to sell. So... A lot of people, and I'm, I had a, a good example of this today. Uh, <clears throat> guy saw a property that I had put on the market. He he uh, he had lost two other properties prior to that. Uh, one was he just didn't offer enough money for it. The other one, I think he, he had some issues with his agent getting the offer in in a timely manner. And so he called me. He saw the property hit the market. He saw called me, went and looked at it. And he made an offer, and he made an offer actually above the asking price, uh, not a, not not way above it, but above the asking price. So, in this market, and it's not always been like this, but in this market, you have to come out and make a good, strong offer, especially if it is a hot property and it's something that a lot of people are wanting. And your agent should be able to tell you that and and be truthful. And a lot of times, if a, if an agent says, "Look, I've got," Uh, two people looking at this property today or three people looking at this property today, they think that's some kind of, of a marketing or sales technique and that we're trying to be to pressure them, and we're really not, not in this market right now. And so um, the guy made the offer. You got, th that's, that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is try to make your offer with without a lot of contingencies. Make it as clean as possible. Now, that's not always possible to make it real clean, but if you can make that offer with, uh, without a lot of things the seller has to do and make, that, make it feasible to that seller, that seller's going to more likely work with you, even if your offer is a little less than what somebody might offer before. If, if yours is maybe a quicker closing date, or maybe you're not asking them to do something that the other, the other buyer may be asking them to do, they may go with you over that buyer for that reason. The third thing is, is to make sure that your agent gets that offer into that seller as quickly as possible. And I, I would say that's almost one of the most important things because in a market like this, 
if you don't get your offer in quickly, by the time you get it in, they may have already accepted another one, even though yours was better. So you got to get it in quick. It needs to be, it needs to be within a couple of hours. If that, if you tell an agent I want to make an offer today, they need to get it in within a few hours. And and that goes back to the full time realtor, somebody who's aggressive, somebody who's good at their job. Is they know time is of the essence, and they can if you chose the right agent, they'll be truthful to you and and things like that. And and something to think about when you're making an offer. And some people get frustrated. You ever had that happen? Like people say, oh, it's just too much, too many offers, too fast or whatever. There's two ways to look at that. Yes, it can be a little frustrated. Trust your agent in that standpoint because they do this all day, every day as a professional. And also, if there's a lot of people interested in property, guess what? That means you're looking at a good property. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with a lot of people. And something I tell my clients, let's say they said, Slade, I want this property. Let's say tomorrow when I was showing at 78 acres, they said, I want this property slave. What do I need to do to get it? Typically, in a normal market, I'd say, all right, make a good, strong offer. Not a lot of contingencies, and let's get this thing closed. And uh, you know, and but right now, I would tell them, okay, how? I, I would tell them, okay, they'd say, do I need to make a full asking price offer? And yes, that is a great thing. Something I did, uh, I think, in twenty twenty, I had a client buy a trap for a thousand dollars over asking price, and. It was listed at nine hundred twenty-five thousand. They bought it at nine hundred twenty-six thousand. And I asked them. I said, "Listen, are you going to be upset if you lose this property? We knew another offer was coming in. Are you going to be upset if you lose this property over a thousand bucks?" They said, "Absolutely. I'd be upset if I lost it over ten thousand bucks. I want this property." I said, "Make it a thousand dollars over asking price. Don't put any contingencies on, and you'll own this property." Because I knew that the other agent was going to probably bring in a full asking price offer because it had just hit them literally had hit the market that day. And and so I asked them, you know, if let's say it's a two hundred thousand dollar house and somebody says, look, I want this property, it's whatever. Do the take off any contingencies you can. Of course if you gotta have finance and you gotta have a home inspection, your agent will tell you if these are normal things, don't ask for too much. And peel off whatever contingencies you don't need and then if you if 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 five hundred dollars is going to get you upset if you lose it over, guess what? Up your up your offer that much. Don't let a little bit of money in the long run, you know, out of your dream property. Because if this is a property we're going to raise kids at, or retire at, or, or a recreational track that you're going to have your kid kill their first deer, your grandchild kill their deer, don't let trying to get the best deal mess you up. Oh, man, that happens to me all the time. I, it probably happens to you too, Scott. I get business people all the time that are so interested in winning the deal, they lose sight. What's the goal here? The goal is to get the property. Let's not try to win the deal. You apparently can afford this property you want in business or in life. Let's try to get the property and not have a pissing match. Well, and, and the thing about what, what you're talking about is you know, and, and I know because we're in the business every day, we know what kind of market it is. And we know what type of strategy you you need to use for whatever market you're in. There may be a point in time, there was a time several years ago, to where you didn't have to use the strategy that we have to use now. And, and you could try to get a better deal and you didn't risk losing the property because there wasn't so many people trying to buy. So your agent needs to know that. Your agent needs to be smart. And he needs to tell you the truth. Or he or she needs to tell you the truth. And that's one thing that you need to, when you're talking to an agent, we're, we're, we're talking about how to pick an agent today. You need to make sure that the agent that you're talking to is not scared to tell you the truth. Because I know a lot of agents that won't tell their client the truth because they're scared they're going to get mad at them. And if, if your client gets mad at you for telling the truth, they just get mad. You just, but you got to do what's right for that client, even if that's not what they want to hear. So, we know what kind of market it is right now. We know that it is a seller's market. So we have to educate our buyers, knowing that, and they are going to have to take a different approach, just like you're talking about the things that you're talking about doing, that you may not have had to do two or three years mm -hmm. ago. And you think that's funny when Scott says agent won't tell the truth. God, that happens so much. And we see it on the selling side and the buying side. Agents, because I guess they don't have a lot of clients or just afraid of controversy. I mean, I dealt with this this morning. It's, 
I told my client, I said, do you want me to, I said, you don't pay me to tell you what you want to hear. You pay me to tell you the truth. And so I told him exactly, this is what your property's worth and this is what it's sell for and this is how we can get there. You got to be a full-time agent and be confident in what you're saying to say that. And so we see, we see selling agents a lot of time, they'll list a the parking way above value and you hear it in their voice. Well, I knew we listed it too high, but you know, they wanted to list it that high. Well, did you educate your client? That's your job to educate your client to what the market is. Now, everybody's different. Me, if somebody wants to list something just way above uh, value and unrealistic, in a normal market, I, I, I probably will turn that listing down. I mean, Scott and I are in a point in both of our businesses where one listing tomorrow is not going to make us or break us. And we only have 24 hours in a day. And we won't, we're not interested in putting properties up for sale. We're interested in selling properties. So, Mr. Seller Client, I'm not interested in putting your property up for sale. I want to sell it. There's two different prices. Well, Scott, is there anything we didn't touch on uh, on here? New Ryan, you got any questions? You're going to be a new home buyer, you know, in the next couple of years, hopefully, if you can continue to making some money. So, you got any questions for him? The man's just ready to get off of work. He says, Slade, y'all talk talking. He's got to go to a little party later on or something. Or, or <laughs> that's more. right. That's right. Hey, if anybody's looking for New Ryan in the next three days, don't try to call him. He's going to be on a bachelor party. Not his. But, uh, but he's going to be on one, so we'll be holding the fort down. Scott, I hope we can uh, continue to sell property without our shining star over there. And I think we'll be able to maybe make it for a couple of days without it, maybe. That's right. New Ryan always makes vocal appearances in these podcasts. People are calling for him. You know, women have been all over there trying to get his social media. He's got a fan page out there. Y'all y'all check it out. NewRyan.com. It's a, it's a thing. Well, thank you, Scott, for ha on, uh, coming on. And we, you know, I think we've, we've talked about a lot of these things. It really is important to choose the right realtor to help you navigate this process. And look, this is not a selfish thing. I think Scott and I are both good at our jobs, but there's other good agents out there and in other markets. Do your research. Talk to people. Talk to the community. And just because you see people's signs everywhere doesn't mean they're doing a good job. Because guess what? If you see somebody sign all the time and it stays there, guess what that means? It's not selling. I see it all the time. I'm like, if your paint's wearing off your sign, I take it down. It's embarrassing. I see it all the time. So just because you see somebody sign everywhere doesn't necessarily mean they're the best agent for the job. Uh, do your research. I like to get three or four uh, properties at one sign. That's, yeah. that's, if, you, if you get three or four properties out of one sign, you know you're doing good. That's right. That's right. You know, these signs aren't cheap, you know. we yeah. got we got to put more money into our marketing for our clients. So we try to get, we sell a property fast, jerk that sign up, put it in the shade, and then put it on the next property. Well, Scott, thank you for coming on. If y'all want to buy a home anywhere in the Pike County, Amick County, Walthall County, anywhere in Brookhaven area, Scott can hook you up. Small lots, homes, any type of properties, he can definitely help you out. You can Check him out there at Southern States Realty. He's actually one of the owners with myself. I mean, Scott came on at the same time. Scott, have you enjoyed being an owner thus far? Is that a big step in your life? Are you excited about that? I'm very excited about it. It actually hasn't really sunk in yet. So every now and then it's kind of funny. I'm at the office and uh, I'll be doing something and I'm thinking about how much money this is costing the office when I used to not think about that at all. <laughs> that, that is the truth. That, or... Or I catch it when somebody else is doing a really big deal, like happened at the office today. I was like, huh, I, I like that. I like, used to be jealous, but now I'm not jealous. I'm like, right. yeah, I make a little bit of money there. So uh, it's been fun. It really hit home for me the other day when uh, we get an email every Friday about uh, company rankings and things like that. And, and we got that email, and it said our names on there. I don't know if you noticed that. And I was like, wow, people notice me. No, it's not fake. You know, yeah. we're, we're, we're really owners. But uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, it's been a great podcast. We learned about how to be, how to choose your realtor. Very important topic. Uh, not sure what we're going to do next week. I think we're going to work on summer food plots with the backwoods attraction, things like that. It is that time of the year. Turkey season's over. I did not get to go to the Missouri Project up there. The baby's going to be here Tuesday, and I just couldn't quite make it up there. It's too risky. Ryan Wascom did to kill a turkey on our farm in Missouri today. And uh, he went and actually rode by the new farm. So we'll give you all an update on the Missouri Project here in a couple podcasts. But thank you all for listening. God bless. We're out.